recording from Kamloops, British Columbia, from the BC Wildlife Park, where spirit bear clover is now residing and in captivity once again. My wife Sue and I traveled to Kamloops to visit clover and to meet the um, wonderful so staff and caretakers there. Um, startle him. Mm -hmm. He is uh, very much, you know, when he's in his den, he's in his den a lot more than than he had been. So he's obviously gearing up towards maybe uh, uh, hopefully denning up here soon. Just don't want to add any stressors. We want to make it a very positive experience okay. because um, obviously having people up there, we don't want him to be um, upset with people. We don't want him to be um, obviously stressed in any manner. We're, yeah. As we approached Clover's temporary facilities, it was a little bit uncomfortable to see a place that looked like a penitentiary, something far from the comforts of Clover's past wild experience and his freedom. But we were happy to hear that he was content and see that he's enjoying foraging for food and that he is being well taken care of and looking very healthy. So besides the fact that it is very unfortunate that he's ended up back in captivity after his, his second journey into freedom, he's in good hands. ...wooden den box. Our other black bears and our grizzly bears all have the same thing. And basically what it does is it's designed to hold their heat in. So a bear in the wild is going to dig out a nice little den or use one maybe that's already there, but it's not going to be a huge space. It's going to be a smaller area. Um, so because he can't dig into a hillside or anything like that, we have an above ground den. So we want it to be as warm as possible and as cozy as possible. So he's chosen the wooden one. It's insulated on the bottom, it's off the ground. Uh, and then he's taken all the leaves and the straw, hay and things that we gave him and he took it inside himself and stuffed his den nice and full. So he's got a, quite a nice little nest built up in there. Now he still has more choice, there's more uh, denning materials and things like that that he can use if he wants to and as it starts to get colder he'll start taking more in there. Um, so that's where he is right now, if you take a look there, he's just sitting in the doorway. After Sue and I spent a couple hours with the staff, caretakers, and friends of the animals, we had a tour of the rest of the facilities and realized how much work and time and energy really goes into taking care of these wonderful animals. Some orphaned, some were also injured and rehabilitated, and some would get back into the wild again. But unfortunately, even with the visitation of two bear experts from the west coast of British Columbia, Clem 2 and Hartley Bay, it is unfortunate to come to the conclusion that this would possibly be, and could very well be, Clover's permanent home. So please help us in supporting this wonderful organization, the BC Wildlife Park in Kamloops, or Drink Spirit Bear Coffee for a better future for animals and for clover. And a special thanks to Steve Blackmore for taking good care of us and facilitating our journey to the uh, wildlife facilities. And of course, thank you to all the wonderful staff at the BC Wildlife Park. And we're very thankful that they're doing such a wonderful job and that clover will be loved and cared for in such a wonderful way in his captivity environment. Thanks for joining me. I'm Bill Holeen, reporting for Spirit Bear Coffee News. Drink Spirit Bear Coffee in support of the endangered spirit bears.